So everybody has their bad days. And you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the world, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on that's just like, makes these small bad days just like specks of dust really. So I'm waking up this morning, I, whether it was a bad nightmare or whatever it was, I'm just having not a good day. And I have this interview with Sherrod today and borderline canceling it because I'm just like, my energy levels are down and I'm just like, take a deep breath, Brent. Go out, walk my parents' dogs. As I'm walking the dogs, you know, I, I look down and it's just the most bizarre thing in the world. But I see these, um, this little patch of, of, of daffodils just like growing out of this compost. And I look around and there's, there's like no daffodils anywhere. And it's funny how things happen, but this like little, I guess smile just comes on my face and I'm like, you take it as a sign and just, there are worse things in the world that could be happening, period. And there's worse things that are happening to many people. So I got in my car, put the, picked this up, pulled it out and decided I wanted to um, plant it downstairs as a reminder when I pull up every day that, you know what, there's worse things in the world to, to be worried about. I mean, you know, here I created this, this valley of flowers. So I donate every year to various um, char charitable events and the Canadian Cancer Society is, is the one that I, I like to um, focus more on. Um, so every year they have an annual event called the Diamond Ball. This year they've, they've decided to change the name to uh, the Daffodil Ball. And the Daffodil for them represents uh, life, strength, and courage. This, because of the name change, I, I wanted to create something that was, I guess, um, more unique than just picking a painting that I had made and, and donating it to represent me at the event. I wanted the painting that I donated to represent the event, at the same time representing everybody that's involved. So these uh, these tanks were they're they're I was just saying they're like an unexpected gift that I that I've created, um, and it, it's funny because there's there's four of them and they're the way that they're set up is the tanks are kind of separating, uh, letting the viewer just kind of walk in between them. Uh, that's the way I look at them. They they were originally set up, you know, so that they're going in, almost in like attack mode, but. Having them separated like this, it just opens, opens, the, opens the path to go right through all the unnecessary bullshit that could be happening in the world, you know? I guess when you make artwork, you're, you, 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 you only make it for yourself, but you make it for everybody else. So you gotta be careful. You don't really gotta be careful, but you, people like to interpret things differently. And when you start making paintings of army tanks and stuff like that, people will just, uh, start to fill in the blanks themselves. Luckily enough, you have me here to, to, to spread the word about what exactly is going on inside my head when I made this. These, these photographs, these original photographs I've taken are of the army tank that's down just off of, I think it's uh, Georgia Street by, by um, the Rogers Arena there. And most people will recognize it because they've either walked by or taken a photo photograph with it. These paintings are a byproduct of uh, another series called Abstract Vancouver, where I go around, take photographs of Vancouver and stitch them back together to create something that's more abstract. Um, everything has bearing, everything that you do uh, is a representation of who you are, you know. Uh, these, are, these are a small, a small part of a bigger project that I, I've been promoting and working on for the past, I don't know, I, it's uh, my first real photographic um, series, I guess. I, it, there's, I, I wanted to move away from paint a little bit more as a, as a material and move into a different type of material, more mixed media, uh, working with digital, uh, with a digital camera and editing. 
I went around Vancouver. I took, I, I picked various days throughout the week, and man, thousands of photographs later. Of I literally went and parked my car and walked around all the districts in Vancouver and took photographs of various buildings that caught my eye, but were also. Um, they're more recognizable uh, uh, of the Vancouver landscape. You know, you got you got these old banks, you know, Burks, and um, you know, trains that have that are parked down on Terminal uh, Avenue with with spray paint on them to you know to Granville Street to to Yale Town to the uh, to the Library Square. I mean, there's you, you got your Science World. And you even got your, your, you got Toys R Us, which used to be, be BOMAC. Um, and then I started getting into the more seedy areas. So I started to take photographs of uh, things that you wouldn't normally think of as uh, a Vancouver landscape. So it started with the Red Vancouver series that I made. And that was, that was, that's what sprung this abstract Vancouver. That was taking this, the, the often overlooked aspects of this beautiful city that we have. Um, like you said, it's the, the mount, people think of Vancouver, the mountains, you know, the, you know, I mean, the nightlife is, is, is you know, it's nice here, but there's, there's lots of beautiful aspects of this, but that doesn't mean that the things that are, that are a, just as much a part of it aren't as beautiful. I wanted I wanted the individual to be taking into a, a space that's kind of uh, it's not real, but it's hyper real at the same time. It, it it brings you in and takes you out somewhere else. That actually kind of made sense. 